Hi guys, Pete Finch here and welcome down to the beautiful Isla Golf Club here in Jordan where I'm going to do in a nine hole, three part course management course vlog. And guys, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button and follow me on my other social media platforms, which are all linked in the description below. Now on these course management videos, I play three parts and I just discuss each shot, how I'm thinking about it, and how you can implement those shots and better course management into your own game. I say better course management into your own game, it very much depends how I think and play as well. So let's go to the first hole, 420 yard par four, and let's loop back here. 422 yards par four here to begin with, and it's 277 yards to reach the bunker on the left, and then it's 314 to clear it. Now, with this slight into wind, I'm not gonna be able to clear it, would be able to reach it, but there's a lot of room off to the right. So I'm gonna be playing a cut. Now I'm gonna be playing a cut by aiming at the left hand, the right hand side of the bunker. So not at the bunker, just to the right hand side. And then if it cuts back a little bit, then great. If it cuts back a lot, that's fine. There's still quite a lot of runoff area to the right hand side. So it's just using that shot shape to take it away from the danger and using the wind just to push it that way as well. Yeah, so that's cutting a little bit more than I wanted to, but that's fine. Loads of runoff area down there. So that's gonna be right-hand semi. There's not really a massive amount of rough on this course, so it should be good. 123 yards left in, just in the right-hand semi here. The ball's above my feet. Now there's danger on the right, very, very deep bunkers by the looks of it. So I'm gonna aim at the pin. Now with this light, I'd expect it to go a little bit left, but I don't wanna aim over the bunkers because if it does end up short and it doesn't move, I'm gonna be in trouble. There's no danger to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna be aiming pretty much at the pin. If it comes around a bit, then absolutely fine. But if not, then it's just gonna be missing slightly off to the left. So just a little pitching wedge here. I'm gonna straighten out my legs just a wee bit. Hold it slightly further down the shaft to try and minimize any difference in that face plane tilt. Yeah, so that's moved left, but it's just gonna to be to the left of the green. No danger. Safe play. Hey, just me, back at SwingQuest HQ, and I just wanted to go into a little bit more detail about what I said there about face plane tilt, because this is one of the main determining factors on where your ball is gonna go on these sloping lights. Now I can demonstrate this. It sounds slightly complicated, but it really isn't. I can demonstrate this with a club head and a bit of tack and a Crayola. Crayola felt tip, um, not sponsored. So you can see what I've done here is I'm pointing the club face straight at the camera. I'm letting the normal loft line the club so I'm not de-lofting it or adding any loft. That club shaft there is upright. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna alter the lie angle now by dropping the shaft down. So what happens here is the toe goes up in the air but just notice what happens to the club face. So it goes from pointing straight forward to now actually angling off to the left. And I've not changed anything there, I've not altered anything at all. Same thing's gonna happen, point it straight at the lens, start to actually make that shaft a little bit more upright. You can see that the club face now starts to alter off to the right-hand side of target. So that's why it changes when you're sloping light. So when that ball's above your feet and your hands go a little bit lower in relation to the level of the ball, that toe is going to be moving up more and the club face is gonna point left. That face plane tilt is gonna to be to the left-hand side. And it's exactly the same when the ball is below the feet. And that is why you need to make as many adjustments as possible to try and counteract this. So standing with straighter legs when the ball's above your feet holding it further down the shaft holding it at the top of the shaft and really bending your posture down into the ball when it's below your feet all these things are going to allow you to try and counteract the amount of curvature that you might see so simple as that hopefully you knew that if it's not please comment below and what else have you found off sloping lies works but remember club face is king wherever the ball finishes so just off to the left here, you can see how short it is here it's pretty much like a winter green at home in the UK is best way of describing it. And it goes up onto the good green. It's gonna move slightly to the right as it gets onto the green as well. Still a chance to hole it, but it was a safe play. Maybe too safe, but it was safe. Yeah, just to the left. Ah, it's okay though. Safe par to start. 465 yards. It's certainly not getting any easier. And this is quite a tight hole as well. The fairway seems to valley a little bit. So if it's a little bit left, a little bit right, it does look like it's gonna kick in. But then it also looks like there's a bit of a creek running across the front of the green. So finding the fairway here is pretty essential. Now I've obviously got that beautiful backdrop to actually pick a target line. And I'm actually gonna focus on one of the towers in the town in the background as my line. So that's my focus point, that's what I'm aiming at, and I'm gonna try and hit it pretty much dead straight, well, slight fade with my ball flight at that target. 
Ooh, drilled that. Slightly further left than I wanted. Go on there. Yeah. So this fairway is definitely a valley. So that's pitched left hand side and it's ended up banging in the middle. So after a good drive, 198 left into the pin. The pin is at the back and I've got about 180 to actually the middle. So I've got my five iron and if I strike this well, this is gonna go about 190. Shouldn't go beyond that. So it should be pitching around the middle and have a little bit of release. Be the number. Ooh, I think I've flown that all the way back there. So that second shot's flown quite a long way. Just pitched about there. This doesn't leave many pitch marks on these green, the so firm at the moment. Ah, no turn, no turn. However, I'm pleased in some ways because I hit the putt I wanted to. And that's how I'm judging my putts. Have I hit the line that I wanted to? Was it a decent pace? Yes and yes, that's fine. Misread, but I'm happy-ish. Okay, 183, the pin is to the right of the green, and it's a par three, and as always in par threes, I just go for the pin because I want to hold in one, simple as that, seven iron, let's go for it. Cut a bit. Yeah, good shot, centre of the green. Chance for a birdie, and it looks like a relatively straightforward put up the hill from right to left, with the mountains in the backdrop. Let's finish this part one under, shall we? Oh, no. Oh. Misread. Not reading the grain, I don't think. Ooh. Sneaks in. Okay, end of part one, guys, and level par. I was hoping for one under, but a little bit of difficulty reading the greens. I'll probably do more on that on part two. However, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and comment below about everything that you've seen in this video. Remember, it's all about sharing. It's all about learning together. I just want to say a massive thank you to Isla as well for having me down. Stunning golf course in such perfect weather. It's going to make me very happy, and I am very happy. So, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in part two.